Matthias Mann works here at the Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry in Martinsried, near Munich. Since 2005, he's been the director of the Department of Proteomics and Signal Transduction at this institute, where two of its researchers have already been awarded the Louis Jonte Prize for Medicine. Conducting research on proteins in order to better understand how they function, that's the daily task of the scientists who work here. In his laboratory, Matthias Mann developed and perfected a tool that revolutionized methods used for characterizing the proteome, mass spectrometry. We basically analyze uh, the proteins, so they are prepared at this point, and they need to be loaded in the sampler. So they're being the samples, for instance, from a cancer sample, they are being loaded into the machine, and then they are picked up and separated in these very fine lines and then we have this process of electrospray where these ions are formed of, of the cancer proteins and then they are transferred to the mass spectrometer. We measure the mass of them and we fragment them and that uh, tells us what, the, what those proteins are. It was at Yale in the USA, under the supervision of John Fenn, his mentor, that Matthias Mann developed his knowledge and expertise in mass spectrometry, and also in a technique essential for proteomics analysis, namely ionization using the electrospray. The process where, the, where these ions are formed, that's basically what I've spent all my life on, so already more than 25 years. Uh, so this is a very important process that, that we can bring the proteins in the gas phase, as you say, so they have to be ionized and vaporized, and that makes this whole thing possible. So that's also where I started my career, and we've been doing that basically every day then for the 25 years, and, and now we have 12 of these machines, and they're doing that 24 hours every day. So using this invention that my thesis advisor made a long time ago, that he got the Nobel Prize for, so that we're using, and that's the basis of, of the whole proteomics pipeline. Matthias Mann is a somewhat unusual biologist with a passion for techniques and technology. Taking mass spectrometry forward calls for continuously modifying the equipment used and also designing effective IT interfaces. The tools developed here are used on a daily basis by Matthias Mann's team at the Institute in Martinsried and elsewhere too. Actually, this, this, uh, this lab is one of the best labs when it comes to the proteomics and uh, they have really the recent generation instrument and uh, the, there are different expertise available in this lab and uh, since uh, I was interested in this particular technique, I think this is one of the best lab uh, and that, that's the reason why, why I'm here. I think the technique is wonderful to answer all kinds of biological questions. So I think for immunology it's as valuable also as for other biological topics. And, but there, there are some aspects, for example, in immunology which um, are right now able to, answer, able to be answered with this technique, since all the machines became more sensitive. And right now, for example, we can look at these tiny amounts of secreted proteins that are secreted from immune cells and that are used to coordinate the immune response to pathogens. I think that was not possible earlier, and right now it's the right time, the right spot to do these things. We apply this technology to our flight muscle question, to the question how the flight muscles are built. Of course, proteins are important for every cell, and of course, every organism uses proteins to build cells. And uh, you just need basically the, the correct databases, which you then search the spectra you get out of the machines in order to identify your proteins and also some software modifications which are developed in, in Matthias's department to be able to identify your proteins. But these proteins can be from any biological sample, so it's not restricted to yeast or mouse or human. So we can also apply it to, to Drosophila and we make great use of that in our daily experiments. In the near future, mass spectrometry could revolutionize the diagnosis of certain diseases and the kind of treatment proposed, clinical applications in which Matthias Mann takes considerable interest. Yes, that's been very nice in this whole process. So on the one hand, 
as I said, I'd, I like to play with these things and further develop them. So it's like a toy in that sense, but, but then it's not only a toy because we can actually more and more use it for making first biological discoveries. And now uh, in the future, we hope to go directly into the clinic with that. And for instance, to see how serious a certain cancer is. So we, can, we hope to get data that's accurate enough to say that how the cancer will develop and then the doctor can choose the treatment according to that. So that's, that's the hope and I think we're, we're not so far away from that. A calm and determined man, Matthias Mann nonetheless knows that he's competing with numerous other researchers who all share the same passion. It's a scientific and medical challenge he faces with a mixture of excitement and serenity. So he has this calm, cool way to, do, uh, to deal with competition. It's never hectic, it's never stressful. I mean, it can be stressful, but not in a, in a painful way. He's one of the few bosses who actually understand the term time in the lab. So our experiments take time, and he actually understands that. I know that other bosses, for instance, they, or, yeah, they um, don't really understand that anymore and think everything can be done within a day, which is not true. So yeah, totally. I think what he does is uh, extremely difficult. Can't imagine how he, he handles all these things. He has a very tight schedule, but he keeps always um, amazing calm. <laughs> it's always very surprised, uh, surprised to see him so calm. Despite of uh, his internal stress, I guess, or his uh, schedule stress, and, and I think he's very um, organized in his head, and I think this helps him um, uh, every day with the with the stress that this work uh, is connected to. Yeah. Sometimes it's not nice, and you wish you had, did not have any competitors, so you could sleep more and, uh, and take it easy. But uh, I think in the end it's good, so as long as it's not too much competition, then it's good because we all then uh, uh, keeps us on our toes and we work as fast as we can. And if we didn't have any competition, we wouldn't, you know, we, we wouldn't get so far. So as long as it's not too destructive, then it's actually good to have the competition. Matthias Mann lives just a few minutes away from his laboratory with his Danish wife, a professor specialized in American history. The couple have a son studying philosophy at Cambridge. Well, we, um, we sort of have three cultures, I think, at home. Uh, Matthias and I speak Danish together. Um, and obviously we live in Germany, so Germany, German is, is a big part of who we are. And then now also, because I teach American history, the US and Britain is a part of us as well. So we have three languages and we speak them, you know, um, always, one or the other. But we always have those three cultures that we're a part of, I think. Between traveling, practicing sports, reading and the study of proteins, Matthias Mann seems to have found the right balance for his personal and professional life there's an unmistakable aura of quiet, purposeful strength about him. The thing about Matthias that I think is, is so uh, wonderful is that he's actually so well read. He's not a boring scientist. Science means a lot to him, but so do a lot of other things. And when we first met, that is what I found, you know, as a humanities scholar, so attractive in him, that he is widely read and he is widely interested in all kinds of things. And that, to me, is, is, is wonderful about him, that he is not just completely focused on his work. His work means a lot to him, um, and it's very important, obviously, what he does, but he is also um, keenly, very keenly interested in all kinds of other things. And that is where we meet, you know, where our interests uh, overlap. Yeah, I'm, I'm generally interested in how society develops and politics and so on. Um, so particularly also different countries, so between my wife and I, we, we have Denmark and, and Germany, but we met in the US, so we follow everything that happens in the US quite, uh, quite closely, so I think that's very interesting. As a scientist anyway, you're kind of a citizen of the world because all your colleagues are all over the place in China, Japan and the US and France and Switzerland especially. <laughs> So uh, it's, uh, it's natural to be interested in, uh, in, in the world outside of your city, let's say.